Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and welcome to the post 44. How do you create a goal? And we're going to start this week, firstly, with a statistic from Kirsten Ulrich's The On Purpose Goal Plan. And she reported in this book that only 3% of the population of the United States ever create a goal, and only 1% of the US population write down that goal. Wow. So today, today we are going to share this. We are going to firstly become part of that 3% and we are going to summon a goal. But secondly, we're going to become part of the 1% because we're going to write that goal down and we're going to take it for a walk. And it really is time for all of us to, to make this decision today because it's clear after COVID that a lot of us are, are drifting. We're confused, we're angry, we're frightened. All these weird influences are doing all sorts of weird stuff. We've lost that sense of community, that sense of an individual as being part of something even greater. And instead of talking about citizenship, we're sort of um, shopping. And we've lost faith in the structures that we used to be able to rely on. So what we have to do now is establish new goals, new habits, new purposes, new behaviors. And we're gonna do that together today. Today, we're gonna to create a goal, yes, but we're going to create a structure and a purpose and momentum around it. This is not magic, although I love a little bit of magic. This is not magic. We're going to find a target a purpose that is worthy of your time and then we're going to focus on it so what we're going to do today is cut away perhaps temporarily but cut away at least some of the clutter in our lives cut away, cut, cut away some of the less important ideas and goals in our life and we're going to focus on one goal in many ways we're sort of forgetting about willpower willpower is great but you can exhaust it so instead we're going to focus on purpose we're going to focus on behaviors and we're going to focus on outcomes we're going to create routines i'm aware that we're moving you away from something but we're also going to move you towards something so let's start how do you create a goal well, yes, this is part of our coaching series and thank you so much to everybody for the amazing feedback and the journey we're all sort of on at this point. Who knew this was a thing? But this is going to be another practical post this week. And firstly, what we're going to talk about, and you might want a bit of paper again and a pen, is we're going to talk about creating one goal, just one goal, and ensure that that goal emerges from the mission statement that we created and introduced last week. So goals matter. Why? Because they are the stepping stones to success. And also importantly at the moment, I think colleagues, they move us from a survival mindset to an achievement mindset. And they move us from sort of confusion to a relatively vivid pathway that can move us from our present and to our future. Now a goal is an idea, a set of desired actions that comes from a plan. Now what happens is we have to commit to a goal so we can achieve that goal. And goals are delivered by a deadline. Goals are different from a purpose or an aim. Purposes, aims, they're great, but goals are different from them because a goal focuses on an end point and that end point has intrinsic value now Locke and latham argue that goals increase our performance because they increase our focus and they increase our intensity they also made a great argument that we tend to mobilize specialist knowledge systems when we're in pursuit of a goal i found that quite interesting so goals matter because they increase and they enhance our performance. Now, SMART objectives are part of this. So, you know, the specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So, 
smart. Now I know there's all sorts of people that critique smart and sometimes I critique the smart stuff. But look, when we're starting at this point, smart is a great way to start. The smart model reminds us that a goal must be specific. Now we're going to talk about the determination of one specific goal today. But it must be measurable because you can't achieve something unless you can measure it. And it must be achievable. And you must know what that achievable goal looks like. So you, like me, we may want to have peace in the Ukraine, right? But one person in the Antipodes is not going to be able to achieve that goal. We can support it, but we can't stop the bombing. OK, so it's not an achievable goal and your goal must be relevant. In other words, it must come from your mission statement. Your goal must be relevant to where you want your life to go. That's pretty important. So it must be a way, a punctuation, if you will, for time that moves you from the present to the future. OK, and yes, finally, it must be time bound. A goal has an end point. It must conclude and you must know what that conclusion actually looks like. So this is what we're talking about today. We are helping you and me, all of us, to create a goal. Now, the first thing you have to do is select one goal. The second step is to commit to achieving that goal. And the third step is then changing behavior, changing your actions to achieve that goal. Now, if you are to achieve a goal, and this is the important bit, this is the hard bit. If you're going to achieve a goal, you can't just keep going on with business as usual. You have to actually intervene. You have to change something in your daily life. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's offer 10 strategies so that you can achieve your goal today. Are you ready? Let's do this. One, select one goal. Now, we often talk about goals and planning, but actually the best strategy, I would argue all the time, but particularly when we're learning about goals, the best strategy is to select only one. And then we focus completely on that single goal and we understand what that achievement looks like. We understand how a goal is measured and we understand endpoints. So it has a meta functionality if we choose one because we're learning how to achieve a goal. You're with me? So people, whether it be through ambition or desperation or fear, endlessly create multiple goals. You know, we can all create lots of goals that we would like. But the point is, creating goals is pretty easy. Achieving goals is really hard. So let me give you an alternative. Now, look, I'm incredibly busy, right? And I have to create a little bit of a focus outside of my professional work. At the moment, I'm reading, I think, 380,000, 400,000 words of student work at the moment. I've got a series of my students about to finish their PhD. So that could completely occupy my life because that's a big chunk of drafting every single week. So what I do around that drafting work is I create one goal and I make that one goal the focus of the entire week. And by the way, that goal for me is write a thousand words a day. OK, so and each day I enact that goal. But the night before I write that goal down to achieve it the following morning. So a thousand words a day for me. Now, there are long term goals like we did on our whiteboard soiree. Hi to everybody again. We planned for an entire year and that's great. That's important. But what we need to do is then pluck one of those variables off the whiteboard and make that the singular focus. If you're writing 10 pieces, none of them will get finished. Pluck one out and make that your goal. Right. And then each day create something measurable that is completing that goal. So for me, a thousand words a day. But I have seen students finish a PhD writing 250 words a day. Remarkable strategy that. So every day they are going to write 250 words. No judgment, just write it. I've also seen students complete a PhD when they say, I'm going to read five articles a day. So again, you see that really measurable. And this is what I'm going to do today. And I'm not going to stop until that goal is completed. And you see, 
that's in many ways why New Year's resolutions don't work, because the resolutions don't come from that mission statement, the values of your life. But also, I think the goals are too numerous. They're too dispersed. So today, let's read your mission statement and create one goal from it. Think about what you can accomplish in a week, in a month, or indeed as I'm doing at the moment, in a hundred days. And think about a goal that would actually change your life, but also give you confidence. Now you may decide your goal this week, and this is brilliant, is I am going to write 250 words a day. You might decide I am going to read an academic article every day. That is a great goal, tremendous, brilliant. Take a breath, construct one small goal, and let's now work through the rest of the post so that you achieve that goal. Let's go to number two. Write your own goal. Do not live the goals of other people. This is crucial. Oh, wow it is. We live in selfish, self-absorbed and bullying times. It surprises the hell out of me most days. Because if you don't set your own goals then you're going to be living in and enabling the goals of other people. We also then have all these sort of toxic positivity people. You know, the people that do the stop being negative, never give up, just be positive. Mm -mm, that's a first world problem. The toxic positivity people, they need to calm the farm, right? Because, you know, again, life is difficult. Life is troubled. It's not a matter of, oh, well, look, these issues don't exist. These problems don't exist. They do. And saying it's a first world problem doesn't get rid of the problem. You with me? Because problems and issues and crises are contextual. So when you, you set a goal yourself, you are occupying your present and you are stating that you are of importance. You are of value. Therefore, setting a goal clears the deck for your life. It creates a strategy to wipe away the noise, the chaos the, of other people. Now, there's so much commentary at the moment, hyper personal commentary that is harmful, that is dangerous, that is nasty and banal at the least. And we live in a, a time, and it's really upset me to be honest, where shockingly dreadful phrases and words are thrown at people with such carelessness. And that's a tragedy. Now, all of these comments <laughs> from other people attempt to bring you into alignment with other people's goals. Mm -hmm. So you have a right and you have a responsibility to be the star of your own life and to not be living other people's goals. Now, if it helps you, whenever these distracting or disturbing behaviors emerge in my own life, I've developed a very, very clear strategy. So whenever a nasty phrase or a nasty word or someone goes, ah, 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 um, I, I have a strategy and I use it every day. And that is, in my mind, I summon the nasty phrase or an image of the nasty person. And then in my mind, I create a windshield wiper. <laughs> And so I have that dreadful phrase and then I just like a windshield wiper, I just wipe it away and then my vista is clear. So it's a mental technique, it serves me well, see if it works for you. It just means my vista is now clear, I will not be deflected from my goal, I will not be living your life and your phrases, your labels are not relevant in my life. Moving on. Three, <laughs> consistency is key. Goals without a change in behavior get you nowhere, okay? Because to achieve a goal, you need to change something in your life, full stop. And one of the reasons, for example, people don't finish a PhD, truly brilliant people don't finish a PhD, is that they are incredibly busy people and they attempt to pour a PhD into an already full bucket of life. And if your bucket of life is full and you pour a PhD in, the PhD is not going to fit into the bucket. Okay, so something has to come out 
of your life to be able to put a PhD or any goal into your bucket. The same is true for any goal team. If you're interested in success, if you're interested in achievement, it requires that you make a space in your life for that achievement, for that success. Achieving a goal necessitates that you make a decision and you're making a decision to be consistent, to every day take a step and do something to achieve your goal. You're maintaining motivation every day and you're being personally accountable. To give you my current example, uh, we've been living, Jamie and I have been living in temporary accommodation now for 12 months. All our worldly goods are in storage and that's for 12 months. Now, I could have used all of this as an excuse, right? Like, I haven't got the staff, haven't got the books, haven't got anything, I've got a computer, you know, I've got a shirt, not much else, got one pair of shoes, oh my goodness me. So I could use that as an excuse, go, life's difficult, this is the, I'm not going to achieve any goals. I didn't do that. Instead, two days before I left Adelaide, I bought this, a baby white ball. A baby, I love my baby whiteboard. And can I say, my baby whiteboard has pretty well saved my life. And I've had probably the most productive year of my life. And it's because of that baby whiteboard. Because complacency, making excuses, will block your achievement. And we need to realize, and I've sort of realized it during this year, there's never going to be a good time to do this work. There's never going to be a quiet time and there's never going to be a better time because there never is a perfect time to achieve a goal. So make a decision today and change your behavior today. Four, pay yourself first. Now, those of you who were with me through my last video series know that this is pretty well the mantra of my entire life pay yourself first. What does it mean? Well, life is frantic and the goals and the hopes and the dreams and the aspirations of other people often dominate our entire lives, right? So I'm doing a lot of drafting for other people at the moment. And our lives, particularly after COVID, are endlessly filled with the urgent, the chaotic. But unless you look after yourself, you give yourself give your mind a little bit of a rest time. You fill your well back up with reading and ideas and feeling happiness and pleasure, then you've got nothing left to give to anybody else, right? And that's why I made a decision all those decades ago to get up super early and work between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. Because those two hours, it's not interrupting anybody's lives. It's not impacting on my workplace. It's not impacting on my students and my student-based responsibilities. It's not impacting on my family too much at all either. I'm not bothering any other human. I'm not taking time off any other human. So instead, every single morning, I wake up and I pay myself first. I work to achieve a goal. And that is the gift I give myself every single day. It keeps me active, engaged, thinking, curious and outward in my interpretations and understandings rather than inward. We focus outward, ideas, the world. So before I spend the rest of my day caring for other people and their goals, I've paid myself first. And no matter what, and you, you might not be able to do two hours, and I understand that. But how about today you make a decision to get up 30 minutes, 30 minutes earlier and pay yourself first. And by the way, this strategy is called time blocking, time blocking. And in 2021, this is unbelievable, in 2021, a project was conducted by the Development Academy and published by Richardson in the same year about personal time management and they surveyed 500 people through a diversity of industries and these people were asked in the survey do they have a time management system and do they conduct a regular time audit 
pretty straightforward questions. Now, less than one in five people, 18% of people have a time management system. Wow. The rest, 82% use emails or the email calendar to sort of organize their day. And only 20% of people carry out a monthly time audit. So they actually know how they're spending their time. And 49% of people have never conducted a time audit. Okay, so that means most of the population, most of the time, have no idea how they're organizing their time. And indeed, their time is sort of organizing them. The importance of time blocking, paying yourself first, is that it is the most effective and the simplest time management system. It increases your productivity and it increases how and when you achieve goals. So find 30 minutes, block it in your schedule, pay yourself first, achieve your goal. Five, remember that interventions in your daily life are difficult. Goals are very easy to create. They're difficult to achieve because you have to change your behavior. And the reason for this, as Kirsten Ulrich has argued, is that you must overcome complacency. In other words, we all sort of live our lives and mostly we're just trying to survive. I get that. Mostly we're just trying to survive. And we all sort of stay in our current patterns. They may not serve us terribly well, they may be failing us, but we're sort of comfortable in those patterns. So recognize that there is firstly courage in creating a goal, but there is incredible courage every day to change your behavior to achieve that goal. Now, you are going to need to change your schedule in some way. Now, something is going to have to be removed from your life. Something will have to be, perhaps for a month or a week or 100 days, parked in your life. And that will free up 30 minutes in your day. Now, I understand interventions, change is incredibly difficult. But if we go into the goal configuration process, knowing that each day, you know what, there are going to be challenges and each day you're going to confront an overwhelming desire to go back to when you were comfortable. I get all of that. And so you know that you're mentally prepared and then you are prepared not only to create a goal, but to make the changes in your life to achieve that goal. So know deeply that business as usual in your life is not going to serve you anymore to achieve a new goal. So when you construct a goal, that's great, but you need to construct the behavioral change to enact that goal. Six, create your goal and a plan to achieve it today. Mm -hmm. Today. Now we live in a culture of denial, displacement and disrespect. If we can blame somebody else, we will. If we can shame somebody else, we will. Because it's always easier, isn't it, to pretend we've had no role or no responsibility in the state of our lives. <laughs> but of course, to live a life that's organized by a goal is to live a life in the present and understand how our actions have created our life. In the present. So if we live a strong and proactive day, we are making a commitment here. We are making a commitment every single day to change our lives. And it means we start to live a life with authenticity, with growth, and with meaning. And if you pledge something, then I'd say start today because we know what happens. Oh, look, I'll start on Monday. I'll be busy, start next week. I'll start in a month's time and you know that never happens. There's never going to be a convenient time in your life. So occupy your present today, today, today. Create this goal and configure a strategy to do your first stage in that goal tomorrow. Don't delay, don't deny today. 
Mm -hmm. Seven, <laughs> recognize, name, and silence your distraction strategies. Now, most of us live a pretty messy <laughs> and chaotic life. The environment encourages us at the moment to be reactive rather than proactive. So we're reacting to everything rather than proactively making decisions and walking forward. And I think the chaos of our lives tends to dilute our focus. So paying ourselves first is one way to avoid those distraction strategies. And also 30 minutes a day of calm and focused work can change your life. But what about the other 23 and a half hours? Well, use you need to know what you're doing with the time. So for example, use Apple's app to reveal your screen time. Always interesting. And then monitor what you're actually doing with that screen time. So screen time, see what you're doing. Television time, see how much time you're actually spending watching television. And thirdly, what are you doing with the commute? So three really interesting things. Look at your screen time, look at your TV time, look at what you're doing during the commute, okay? And these three easily assessed environments can be transformed because you stop all notifications from social media today, today. You stop all delivery of emails to your phone. Why is that a thing? And to be honest, you don't need to know in real time if somebody loves your post on Instagram. This stuff has to go. So if you want to achieve a goal, you have to remove at least some of the distractions in your environment. So start with screen time, TV time, and look at the commute. Then ponder, after you've done that, easy environments to clean up, after you've done that, look at the emotional distractions, the emotional noise, if you will, that you are creating. All that negative self-talk does nothing except occupies time. So every time you hear yourself say, I'm stupid, I'm ugly, I can't do this, I'm going to fail, right? Whenever you feel these phrases emerging in your life, you need to stop yourself. And every time you hear yourself say something dreadful about yourself, you need to intervene. And you know what? Get those windscreen weapons working again. It's like, uh, uh, I'm stupid. Do, 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 do. No. So intervene. Because not only are they terrible things to say about any human, let alone yourself, they occupy time. They're a distraction. Get rid of them. Windscreen wiper out. So what you're doing is you're creating the space for growth rather than living in a space of fear and denial. So focus on your behavior, focus on your patterns and work towards that single goal. But also monitor in yourself. How often are you commenting about other people and other people's goals? So other people's business, other people's concern is not your concern. Don't build up their noise and distraction. Focus on your lane. You're responsible for your race. You ain't responsible for theirs. So stop the commenting. Eh, you sure you can do that? Oh, I don't know if you can do that. Oh, that's frightening. Silent. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Eight. Put reminders everywhere of your goal and be accountable. Okay. As we've talked about in this series so far, and this changed my life when I read about this. Whenever we create a goal, we actually have to create it twice. We firstly create it as a mental image. So we create a goal in our mind, but then we have to create it a second time. We have to write it down. We have to give it reality in the physical world. So that means we move it from a mental creation to a physical creation, important. And we do that, of course, most easily by writing down our goal. Firstly, write it down everywhere. Write it on a post-it note in your office, the phone's lock screen, your computer's lock screen. Tell your friends, tell your family about this single goal that you are going to achieve. And that will enable you to be held accountable for that single goal. But also, if you need scaffolding for your support, there's so many wonderful aids that are now available, both online and offline scaffolds. And here's some I prepared earlier. This is the Phoenix Journal. Uh, this is a 12 week plan. And can I say, I've done this, I think three times in my life. 
It's very involved. It, it asks that you really go deep and think through your vision and how it leads into goals and then come up with 12 weeks of a plan. But can I say, it? Pro and I'm being really honest here, it probably saved my life after Steve died because the week after Steve died, I got this journal and I did it for 12 weeks and it allowed me to reboot and restart my life. So and I'm not paid anything by these people, by the way. Um, if you're going through a difficult time and you need to do some deep work, the Phoenix Journal is the way through. Uh, if you're not going through a difficult time, I also recommend it. I'm doing this one right now, the Success Journal. It's done in 100 days, much more straightforward. Here is a goal. What is your value? Here is a goal. How are you achieving it every day? So very straightforward, very clear, holds you accountable. So again, great option. So they're two journals that are strong. But also if you want online support, there's all sorts of fantastic apps that are available at the moment. The ones I was checking through this week that I have all used is ClickUp, Strides, Week Done is excellent, Clockify is excellent, Coach Me, Way of Life, and Goals on Track. All of them are excellent and all of them have a period where you don't have to pay to use them. So you can test them for seven days, I think, and see if they're going to work for you. But you don't use all of them. Pick one and each of them has a different focus. So whether your priority is time management, if that's your issue, if it's inserting goals in your life, focusing on the development of patterns or accountability measures, pick the app that suits your particular challenge or issue. So you realize what's happening here. Make sure you're part of 1% of the population and write down your goals. Make them real in the physical world and use all the wonderful support structures, online, offline, personal and professional to help you get to that goal and enable that behavior. Nine. Manage the stress by saying no, at least for a little while. Okay, so we are learning something new this week. And remember, I'm doing this as well. We're learning something new this week. We're trying to intervene in our lives. We are shutting down distractions. We are creating a new routine. And maybe that routine is for seven days, for a week, for a month, or for a hundred days. And we are working to achieve one goal. Now, it may be an article that you're writing. It may be a chapter. It may be cleaning the laundry. I really understand that goal. Now, you may want to read 30 articles in 30 days. And if you want to do that, you need to cut away the clutter of your life. So while we're focusing on this goal and learning new behaviors, learning new patterns, I don't want you to be hard on yourself. So for this period, a week, a month, a hundred days, I want you, I want me, I want us to say no to new tasks and new opportunities. So when someone asks you and you've already got a full bucket, your bucket is full. When someone says, will you do this? You've got to say no, because your bucket is full. So this may be a no for a week, a month, or a hundred days. But remember, we've got to complete this goal here. We're not just completing a goal. We're summoning and learning about a new way of living. Okay? So reduce the stress on yourself and say overtly, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for this email. But look, I'm working towards a pretty singular, important goal in my life at the moment. Thank you for the email. Thank you for the opportunity. But I am focusing on the completion of this goal. Now, writing that out, creating a mental image, physical, creating a physical manifestation of what you are doing is saying a lot. Because what it's saying is it's speaking that your goal has value, your time has value, and yes, you have value. And you are speaking, you are summoning the life that you want to live. Okay, so stress is managed by writing down one goal and then you write down the steps to achieve that goal and you designate time, time blocking to achieve that goal. That's it. That's it. And the key is therefore, don't then add other goals until the goal has been achieved. And remember, when you share your focus with others, it not only reduces stress, but allows others 
to acknowledge your focus and hold you accountable. And 10, remember that goals matter and you matter. Goals are the punctuation of your life. Do not waste your life. Look, I'm an old goth. And I think a lot about death. And as someone also who lost a husband at a, a very young age, I'm aware of the cost and the consequences of a death, not only on an individual, but on the community around them. And I want to share something I've actually never shared in public. Even Jamie doesn't know about this. But Steve, right until the day he died, was still reading, was still writing. And in the last month of his life, and of course we never know when the last month is until the person dies, but in the last month of his life, he started to do something what I thought was a little bit strange and a little bit morbid. But out of the blue, he'd be sitting on the lounge suite and out of the blue, and he'd have this wonderful smile on his face and he'd say, I wonder what's going to happen to politics in the next 10 years. I wonder what's going to happen to football in the next 10 years. I wonder what's going to happen to our universities in the next 10 years. And at the time, I got quite upset about it because I thought, oh, look, he's been quite morbid. But in many ways, looking back on it, it's incredibly inspirational because he realized, OK, I'm going to die and I'm not going to be able to experience this future. So with Tara, we're going to talk through what this future could be. So at least I get to share a little bit of it. How amazing is that right till the end of his life he remained curious and future focused even when that future had been removed from him wow the truth and it is a dark truth is is if none of us know if today is actually our last day and one thing we know for sure is that none of us have as much time left as we think we do have. So without a goal, time slips through our fingers like sand. A goal is a moment where we make a stand, where we say that our time is valuable because I am valuable. Time, I'm, I've just turned 54, team, and the only life lesson I have for you is time is the only resource that we have. And Dean Robbins, the remarkable Dean Robbins, stated that there are actually four deaths. The first time we die is when we find out that we will die. <laughs> the second time that we die is when someone close to us dies and we experience grief. The third time we die is when we actually like die and the fourth time that we die is when the last person alive remembers us remembers who we were and speaks our name that's the fourth and final death so to live a life without a goal is to live a life of what if and if only we live a life of anxiety of fear of regret a goal, one goal, that we create today, that we create in our mind, we write down, and then we change our behavior to achieve it, can make our lives meaningful so that we don't sort of drift to death. But right to the end, right to the end, we remain active, we remain curious, wondering what the future may hold even when we are gone through our goals through our actions we will be remembered and our friends will speak our name i wish you love light and peace tea out